Hi, this is EJ Davis for Fifty Shades of Geek. Welcome to our first of the video reviews. Um, the plan is I'm going to be working through uh, all of the Gaunt's Ghost saga in video reviews. Uh, if you want text reviews, you can either check my blog um, or you can watch Fifty Shades of Geek very carefully as uh, another of our reviewers, Liam, is going to be working through from uh, start to finish and give us his impressions as well. Um, so, first and only by Dan Abnett. If you want any of the plot details, please go here. Uh, I'm not going to regurgitate vast amounts of plot for you. So, what we have is an Imperial Guard novel. What we have is a collection of short stories that were written by Dan for uh, a publication early on in the Black Library history, and back when 40k really didn't have a great deal of meat on its bones. What we get is we're introduced to a series of characters throughout. Uh, we're introduced firstly to Ibram Gaunt, who's a Colonel Commissar in charge of the Tanith First and Only, um, the titular Tanith First and Only. Um, he's incredibly tall, incredibly skinny, hence the name Gaunt is uh, quite apt. He's quite an honourable character who's got, uh, he seems to have a, a, a core of iron, a, a, a very strong dominating will. Um, he's also quite enigmatic, although we see inside of his head throughout the piece, um, we do get something of a flavour of the fact that he still may be a little uncertain of who he is and what direction his life's going to be taking. Um, we meet other characters uh, that I'm going to get to shortly. What I really liked about the novel was the fact that it starts to flesh out this skeleton of 40k. Uh, we've got the rules, we've got a vague campaign setting, but we've really got no idea how things work. Um, and what Dan gives us is he, he builds these worlds and these devices and these things, data slates, box speeds, um, that all flesh out this idea of a, a, a faintly British science fiction-y kind of future that is semi-plausible. I really love Dan for that. Um, and the, the way that it's structured, we, we've got, I think it's five short stories um, interspersed with recollections from Gaunt's past life, which influences his decision-making process. It's really nice how it's put together. And it's a real page turner as well. It's a it's a fantastically quick and to work in any massive amounts of background troll you're going through and reading a novel, um, collection of short stories that just works. And it's engaging and it's fun. Um, I liked Gaunt as a character. I, I think there's a lot more to be seen from him. There are other characters in there as well. Um, Helene, Helene Larkin, who's a master sniper, I've always got a, a thing about sniper characters. Uh, something of the lone wolf chimes with my own, own personal philosophy and my own personal way of life. Colin Corbeck, who's um, uh, the third in command of the town of First and Only, a big, brawny, um, capable, likeable character uh, who's always drinking uh, or smoking which is fantastic, two of my favourite pastimes, at least at some point in my life. Um, there are bits I didn't like. It is a bit disjointed, but I think that comes with the territory. Um, there are two characters who I really took exception to. Um, Merton Fagor, who's the adjutant to the Tanith second-in-command, Ellen Ron, and Ellen Ron himself. They're both thoroughly dislikable. But I think that shows the talent of Dan's writing, that he can write characters who you can truly detest, but you can understand. And I can understand their motivations, but it still doesn't stop me disliking them. Um, I've read later Dan's stuff before I even got anywhere near Gaunt's Ghosts. I came late to Black Library, uh, and as a result, I've missed a lot of the stuff that went before. I still haven't read Eisenhorn. I haven't read Ravenna, uh, and I don't intend to until... The Beckwin trilogy is finished, and then I'm just going to read them all. Uh, so I know Gaunt's Ghost is unfolding, and I'm slowly catching up. Um, 
but I can see the promise of, of Dan's talent. I can see how he's writing and how it's going to develop. Um, but it's not quite at the level that I have experienced in books like Horace Rising or Prospero Burns. But I know it's going to get there. So, in summary, great characters, good read, some really dislikable things. Um, but the setting itself is, is great. The novel itself is very easy to read and very engaging. So I'm going to score it at 7 out of 10. Uh, First and Only is available as a standalone ebook, which you can get from Black Library. Uh, it's also available as part of the Founding Omnibus, which you can get from most good bookshops, and I'm fairly sure it's a digital download as well. Thanks for listening. I hope you come back to find more, and um, share and enjoy.